Welcome, Ultimate fans, to another edition of the AUDL Take. With this episode, I wanted to make this more for newcomers to Ultimate and newcomers to the AUDL. I wanted to kind of go over the rules that separate the AUDL from WFDF, WFDF. What are the rules? What are the rules? To start off, let's actually go with the WFDF, the World Flying Disc Federation. And these people are basically the governing body for the entire world of Ultimate. They kind of set the majority of the rules and each country then establishes their own organization and they kind of go off what WFDF, for short, <laughs> actually will you know put in their rules. And for the sake of this episode, we're actually gonna be talking a lot about USAU, that is the United States version or their organization of Ultimate. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the very similar things that USAU and the AUDL have. It's still the same amount of players, seven players. The main part of the game is still the same. You can't run with the disc. Once you catch it, you have to basically stop and then become the thrower. And everything from there, they're still uh, pretty much the same. There isn't like a drastic change. It's more of how it's designed for the viewer. We're gonna jump into the first thing that you'll notice between the AUDL and the USAU is the field size. For the USAU, the width is around 40 yards, whereas with the AUDL, it's 53. Now, for the length, it's pretty much the same. I believe there's uh, 80 yards and 70 yards, but for the most part, the biggest change you're gonna see is the width of the field. It really helped the offenses in the AUDL, basically allowing them to swing a lot easier than before. There's always been kind of debate on whether, why, you know, why was this done? And you can really jump into, there's a Reddit all about that, why the field size is the way it is. You could talk about it from a marketing standpoint, from just wanting to make it something different, getting a bigger field, bigger plays. But that was the big first thing that you saw, the big differences starting to separate from the AUDL and the USAU. So another huge difference that you'll notice is that the AUDL is played in quarters, four of them, whereas the USAU plays in halves. Usually it's half of the score of what the final score will be. So if it's 13, then usually whoever gets to seven, that's the half and then you play the second half. There's still a time in both of them, but the USAU doesn't really play with a clock being visible to the players. It's more like once a game has reached about an hour and a half, horns go off, soft caps go off, and the game kind of has to wrap up. The AUDL basically took a basketball approach. Ain't no thing. Sydney. No thing but a chicken wing on a string. I'm Burger King. To this. They wanted to have a clock running each quarter, which kind of creates a buzzer beater situation. There's no real points to reach. It's just how many points can you score in four quarters. And now we're going to start getting a little nitpicky as we move forward, but we're going to talk about the stall count. Now in the USAU, it is a 10 second stall count, whereas in the AUDL, they've lowered it down to seven. I think this lowering of the stall count was more to help defenses since they already feel like they are kind of running uphill against these offenses in the AUDL. There's so much in favor for offenses in the AUDL as far as the width of the field. So the lowering of the stall count was a way to combat that. But if you actually talk to a lot of these players, the 10 second stall count that you get from the players usually isn't um, much of a difference than the seven stall count that you get from the refs. That kind of leads into the next thing, in the USAU, players themselves are calling each stall. So when they run up to the player, they themselves are saying it out loud. In the AUDL, it's a silent count. The referee, usually behind the player, is counting and counting, and usually the last two seconds, he starts to wave his arm. So maybe someone from your sidelines could say, hey, you need to get rid of it, he's, he's waving his arms. But yeah, that's a big difference. I like the silent stall count because I think it gives an even more advantage to defenses in the AUDL. And I think lowering it to seven, there really isn't much of a change. Usually people, when they're doing it themselves, are going probably faster than 10 seconds. So if you really break it down, the 10 to seven, there probably isn't that much of a difference, especially the higher elite players in the USAU. Uh, they're probably getting rid of the disc within five to seven seconds anyways. Talking about defenses trying to have any advantage they can in the AUDL, there is the double team, which is not allowed in the USAU. It's usually one-on-one. -on -one. You can't have two people guarding the disc. With the AUDL, I think they saw that people should be able to handle a double team. Now there's no triple team, it's, you can't just put as many players as you want, but the double team was once again another way for them to try to bolster up the defense a little bit and give them more of an edge since the offenses seem to be getting a little bit more favor in the AUDL. So a big difference there, get that double team and you have that silent stall count. Uh, putting it together, that, that really does help give some advantage. Another rule that's very interesting and I love that this approach happened because within the USAU, if you actually foul someone, 
there really isn't much of a penalty going against you. If anything, you can foul people to allow everyone to kind of regroup, especially if you're on defense. So the there's not necessarily an incentive to foul, but there's really no penalty for it, other than if you're in a big game with observers, you continuously are making flagrant fouls, you can be eventually removed from the game. So the AUDL found a way, especially playing on a football field and having the yards kind of laid out for the most part, most teams play on a football field, you get penalized. So for certain fouls, the team gets to move up five or 10 yards, maybe even 15 yards. And so there's a more direct way of trying to combat the idea that now that they are refs, that these players are then just going to exploit the system. Now, if refs see that you're doing that, you're not only gonna get called with the fouls, but you're gonna help move that offense move up. And uh, that's that's damaging to your defense, especially if you just continuously are making fouls and they're just barely, they're just walking up the field, barely have to do anything on offense. Diving deeper now into some of the rules, one of them that I very much enjoyed in the AUDL is the timeouts and allowing full substitutions. That is not really allowed in the USAU. If you call timeout, you can't then just switch off a players at will. If someone gets injured, then yeah, you have those, he can come off and be replaced by someone and then the defense is allowed, or offense in this matter, someone from the other team can bring in on their player. In the AUDL, anytime a timeout is called, you can do full on line subs. Now both sides can do that. And so I think that actually redefined, especially in the AUDL, you see that for the most part being what the timeouts are used for. Defense makes a great play, the game's close, and they want to put out their offensive players, call the timeout, make a full sub. Now, you're allowing the other team to put on their whole defensive squad, but I, if, if you've been watching the ADL for some time, that's almost primarily what the timeouts are safe for. It's rare, and there's really not much need for it in the sense of worrying about the clock too much, but for the most part, it's getting your right players on at the right time. It's usually used at the end of quarters or late in the game, either at the end of half or at the end of the fourth quarter. I think it's a very unique way of separating themselves with the timeouts and really allowing them to be able to use your roster whenever you possibly can. We're getting near the end of the rules that I really wanted to point out. I probably won't be able to touch on all of them, but this is a very interesting one. And we're gonna talk about a little bit more after I talk about this one, but spirit of the game has always been a big thing with Ultimate. And in the AUDL's case, they have the integrity rule. The idea of the integrity rule is that players themselves can't make calls in the AUDL. And so if they believe that a referee himself has made the wrong call, a player can basically, I think, wave his hands like this and basically say, no, no, I fouled him, or this should have been a call, or no, I don't agree with this call, let the play stand. This was a way, and we're gonna talk about it, this was a way to combat the idea that there are refs now in the game. And so I think this was an answer to that and to keep the spirit of the game alive in Ultimate. And that brings us to probably the most controversial difference that you will see between USAU and the AUD and to this day still I mean it is a hot topic all I can tell y'all is that it's about to go down so I really wanted to end the episode here and that is the use of referees so let's get into this because who it's gonna get wild now I'm gonna tell you right where I stand right in the beginning I'm a person who I it does not bother me that referees are now in ultimate but before we really get in, I feel like I maybe have to back that up. Let's talk about some of the differences here. In the USAU, you do have observers, and that's usually held for the, like the higher elite games, and you really don't see many of them in lower level tournaments. The idea of the observer is they're not active. They're there when players can agree, and then they look to the observer, and the observer can either make a call or the players can decide to make something go back. And that was the idea that the players themselves still are actively engaging in the rules as they play. They are the ones keeping the spirit alive. Whereas in the AUDL, I think they saw it as a more of a marketing move and a way for viewers to just be able to watch a game and not have to sit there and watch people argue about the rules or did you foul me? Oh, I don't think that was a foul, that kind of stuff. So they use the referees as active callers so that they can keep the game moving quickly. And also with the spirit of the game or the integrity rule, it was a way to bring that kind of inject that back into professional ultimate. Yes, we have referees, but if the players want to overturn it, they can. That was a big change to ultimate and it, it really kind of split up the communities. And here's where we're going to get into why I think referees are okay in the game of ultimate. For spirit of the game, if you define it and read its definition, it's not it's not about referees themselves. It's about the players themselves putting the spirit of the game first. Meaning you play with integrity, you play because you love the game, you don't play to hurt other people or put people in danger. The idea is not 
that the referees themselves are taking spirit out of it. The idea is you play with the spirit of the game intact. You respect the players that you're, you are playing with, you play for the love of the game, and you put the rules above all else. You don't try to manipulate or take control. I played in college and there were plenty of teams who knew that if observers, observers weren't there, they would try to take advantage of the rules. There are people who would purposely foul because it helped them get their defense in a better position or calm down or regroup. So there are plenty of people, even in USAU, who do not adhere to spirit of the game. On the whole, it's, it's not a big deal. But the idea that just because you don't have referees means that somehow it's more spirited, I've never understood. I can see on the other side of that though, putting referees is going to encourage people to see what they can get away with. And I think in the early years of the AUDL, that was completely true. I think a lot of players just had never experienced that before. They were thinking, what can I get away with? And I still think there are players that way that are doing that kind of stuff. But I think the refereeing has improved over the years in the AUDL. And like I said, the, the idea is with the integrity rule, the sport there is still trying to emphasize spirit of the game. We want players to stand out and say, no, 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 that was a bad call. I don't feel good about that. Now, we do worry about the, the conversation then kind of steers toward, well, how is this going to affect youth growing up? If, if we lose that, then they're not going to have spirit anymore because we didn't let the players teach themselves. And the AUDL is going to pervert that in some sense because they're going to it's going to trickle down. That's really up to the USAU. I don't think the idea that just because the AUDL has referees means that then the USAU is going to have to adopt it because of it's going to trickle down. No, the USAU is its own organization. They don't have to take referees on. And I honestly hope they don't. I think there's two worlds where, yes, we can have a pro league that has referees and it can survive along with a USAU crew who is basically saying, no, we want players to develop it. Do I think one's inherently more spirit of the game? No, it all comes down to the type of people who are playing and how they view and respect the sport. So that's my most controversial take on this. I don't think refer referees are required in order for spirit of the game to be there. And I think the AUDL, I think it made more sense to have referees because they needed to separate themselves from all the other types of ultimate. And then we get into kind of the, the bickering between the leagues. I believe uh, WIFDF, WFDF still doesn't technically recognize AUDL as ultimate. That may have changed, but I know when it first came out, they refused to basically even call it ultimate because of referees and other types with the quarters. It just wasn't the same thing. And I, I think the AUDL wasn't worried about that. that. Their whole point, I think from the beginning is to separate themselves from what we already have, create a new product of ultimate and make it professional. I want it so bad. So that's gonna really wrap up the, the differences that I wanna talk about, the certain rules, especially if you're new coming into the ADL, new to Ultimate, and you wouldn't really understand the differences. I wanted to make this video for people like you so that you could kind of see what maybe style of Ultimate you prefer and maybe get a bit of an understanding of why certain rules were made. Also, if you've known some that I've missed, please leave them in the comments below. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. But you know, if you're not hitting the subscribe button, I think we're about 50% of you haven't actually hit it. That's fine. I would love for you guys to hit that like button. It helps with the algorithm. It helps people get more exposed to the show as we try to grow here. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in each and every week. And don't worry, I'll be back next week for another edition of the AUDL Take.